What is going on, Cove Bangers? Today's a beautiful day in May 2016. I'm Alejandro, and let's talk about cars. Yo, hit it, Pedro! I'm out! In today's episode of Let's Talk About Cars, yo, I want to throw that debate that's waving in my head right now after driving the LT for so long. Should I keep the 675 LT? And uh, I'm going to need some help and also we're going to see. So let me start by telling you guys uh, the biggest challenge that I'm having with this. Where would you place this car? Is this competing against the Speciale? Or is this competing against uh, uh, the Aventador SV? Because I don't think those are in the same category. Or what do you think? Because this is obviously McLaren's lightweight, more limited edition version of the 650S that would go with the 458 and it would compete against directly the 458. This car is just, at least out here, feels way too good on the street uh, to be competing just with the 458 Speciale, which, mind you, an amazing car. Let me tell you before we jump into any of that, my favorite things about this car, which are extremely evident right off the top whenever you drive it. Um, now that I've had some cockpit time on it. <laughs> now that I've had some time in the car, let me tell you what my favorite things are. And then uh, maybe saying it out loud to you guys or with you, I can uh, uh, have a better answer. So number one, the grip. Holy shit balls. The grip this thing has is ACR level. I was in the canyons, been driving it fast around the city a little bit, uh, haven't taken it to the track, but when you push it on the corner and coming out of it, traction control is on point, lets you play around, but the grip on the tires, it's not normal. Again, it's ACR level. ACR level that was closer to the 918 than a Pagani that has more horsepower, than a Bugatti that has way more horsepower. So uh, immediately right off the top, that grip is a huge, wonderful thing for this thing. Uh, great, great grip overall, wow. Number two, the steering. I mean, if you saw the first drive, you know that I was blown away by the steering of the car. The steering on this car alone will make you fall in love with it right away. I, I, ah, man, this is fucked up. It's so instant, so responsive, so precise, and so delicious. I mean, everything about, I, I just, this is what I want to drive from now on. Like, if this was my body, this is how I would want to drive it. This is perfect, perfect steering, I'd say. Uh, at least my favorite one in the garage today. Number three, and this is super cliche, but the noise, and also forget about like how loud and everything it is. I'm digging more and more these turbo noises that people are putting together, along with the rumble from the car, because again, and I did a pretty good impression in episode one. It sounds like a proper race car. It's insane, insane. It's different, yeah. Uh, do I want to adjust it a little bit more? Yeah, because I do appreciate a lot, again, the noise of the turbos that come with the car. It's just, I don't know. I, I'm really, really digging it. It's different and I like different. So uh, this fits right that. The next one, the damn brakes. I mean, right behind this guy. Boop, step on it. Everything goes forward. Everything flies with you. If there's someone here, they better have their seatbelt on because you'll be thrown out to the front. But yeah, even though braking is incredible, brake feel is great because he doesn't have any bullshit like the 918 or the LaFerrari or any of those. It's a very good proper feel that you get from the car. You're not, it's not too bitey, it's not too loose. It's like dead on perfect, at least for my taste. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, yes. The next one is the driver's position. Because of the way the seat is sitting on the car and how low it is, but yet not so low. I'm 5'11", I'd say there's enough space here for a way taller person than I am. But you sit here and you can see everything at every angle you can possibly imagine. Even with the wing up on the back, I can see today. So uh, that is really, really good. The sitting position is incredible in the car. You feel like you're driving in a video game. It's too easy in a way. It's really strange. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I guess smiling is another one, but that's not going to count because every fast car would probably do that to me. <laughs> the next one, obviously you can't fight the way the car looks. Aside from the Aventador SV, this might be the most aggressive one of the bunch in the whole lightweight section, right? It's 
so mean looking. When the first MP4 came out, everyone complained that it kind of looked like a less aggressive Lotus. I think McLaren worked on that really, really hard to make this car as tasty looking as they did. Because the car looks insane from any angle you want to look at it. From the ass, from the front, from the side. I mean, yeah, the outside. Obviously, the spec in this car turned out to be incredible because it's black. The car looks very aggressive, even though I would have ordered another color. No question about that. The black Alcantara. Everywhere Alcantara, I'm, I'm a sucker for Alcantara. Don't ask me why. I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. The, uh, again, the outside, the black with the orange. Delicious. Ah, oh, yes. Yes. It looks great. I still want to spend some time with this and the Aventador SV side by side and see if that's going to make me fall in love more with the SV or more with this to, by the way they look. So she's quite a looker. <laughs> and last but not least, the suspension. The suspension in this thing is incredible. Not only because it's stiff and all of that crap on the track, which I haven't tested yet, but how comfortable it is on everyday living. It's crazy. It's crazy. It doesn't feel like a sports car. It doesn't feel like it's gonna go that fast. But once you push it through a corner, you feel it. And once we adjust the setups here, my God, my God, well, well done. Just listening to myself saying all my favorite things about this car is that uh, it's a proper track weapon that you can drive every day, right? That's, that's what this feels like. And another great thing about these cars and the world that we're living in today including these cars obviously is the fact that they can go so fast on a track and yet you can bring them back home these are those lady in the streets and the freaking bear that say hey. you know it's a car you take to the track you drive it there you're with your wife no problem babe stay in the in the clubhouse at the track i'm gonna go uh, for a quick lap and then you shit your own self by driving it as hard as you can and then you drive it back home like it's nothing yes yes the future wins again uh. so with all that said the question goes back to should i keep it and i think the biggest problem that this car has in my house is the 918 because both track oriented cars that are great dailies and uh, if you have the 918 why would you have another version of that that's reduced like this one so it wouldn't be a would i get rid of the 918 to buy this because there's no way on earth i'll say it right now that this will make me replace my 918. Nope. But then what? What will it replace? Why Why should it be in the garage? What space is it taking? But even if I can't find a space for it at the house, I want to say that this would be that nice range for the half a million to a million dollar cars today. So what will make me decide completely? Let me tell you this. If this car destroys everything on the track, I'll keep it. Why? Because then there's a spot for it. It is the car that you can drive every day and that you can take to the track and just make everyone a clown without being that expensive. It, this to me, if it destroys everything the way I think it will, would be the best value up to a million dollars. So that's why I would keep this car. And this is gonna be the question of the day. So let me know, do you think this competes against the Speciale, the TDF, the SV, all of them and why? So let me know your thoughts. I'm, I'm dying to hear them. Also, thank you so very much for everyone that taught me how to use the lift system better in the car without going through all the menus. I appreciate that. See, YouTube, YouTube works, guys. So thank you again, guys, for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a good one and take it easy.